Hello, my name is Neha Karka, and I am a PhD candidate in epidemiology at the UCLA Fielding School of Public Health. I first wanted to say thank you to the Western Region Public Health Training Program. Their stipend um, has allowed me to focus my time towards this research, which is also one of the aims of my dissertation. As such, today we'll be discussing pre-exposure prep prophylaxis or PrEP among HIV negative pregnant and postpartum women in Cape Town, South Africa. I also wanted to say thank you to my mentor, Dr. Devorah Joseph Davy, and the rest of our uh, study team um, listed here on the bottom right. Starting off with the background of HIV statistics, based on 2020 UNAIDS data, there were about 7.8 million people living with HIV in South Africa. 230,000 of those were incident HIV cases. Pregnant and breastfeeding women are a key affected population with over double the HIV risk compared to non-pregnant women. The pooled HIV incidence rate during pregnancy and postpartum was 3.8 per 100 person years. And that's important because these rates meet the threshold of substantial risk, which is more than 3% incidence set by the WHO. The problem here is that seroconversion during pregnancy and breastfeeding also increases the risk of vertical transmission. Without effective PrEP for HIV prevention, South Africa expects over 76,000 new infant HIV infections in the next decade, of which a third were attributed to incident maternal HIV cases during pregnancy and postpartum period. In this study, we focus our efforts on um, to prevent HIV acquisition throughout pregnancy and postpartum, and this should also partially impact progress towards eliminating mother to child um, HIV transmissions. Another key affected population here um, by incident HIV are adolescent girls and young women. According to UNAIDS, AGYAW, or adolescent girls and young women, make up 25% of all new HIV infections in Sub-Saharan Africa, while making up only 10% of the population. Compared to male peers of similar age, AGYW were also at double the risk for HIV and they were more likely to acquire HIV five to seven years earlier than men. One way to prevent HIV is with PrEP. Truvada is the most commonly used PrEP pill, which is an antiretroviral pill which can be used daily by an HIV negative person during periods of high sexual activity. One reason PrEP is encouraged is because it is a user, or in this case, female controlled prevention strategy. It offers women a protection method that is discreet, doesn't require partners of consent and may also be compatible with both contraception and preception or conception. However, adherence to the pill is essential for the for the pill to be efficacious. The WHO 2015 guidelines recommended PrEP provision to populations at risk of HIV as part of a combination prevention strategy with con uh, condom use, counseling, early HIV diagnosis, and treatment. The 2020 South African National Department of Health Guidelines also support the WHO guidelines and indicate PrEP is safe for use during pregnancy and breastfeeding. And yet, PrEP adherence has been relatively low in South Africa and surrounding countries. The PrEP-PP study is an ongoing cohort study led by Dr. Joseph Davy, and it is comprised of 1,200 cisgender, HIV uninfected, pregnant, and postpartum women over the age of 16. Here we, I mapped out the HIV prevention cascade um, or the PrEP cascade, which is a quantifiable framework that can be used to illustrate stages of prevention care by mapping individuals um, at substantial risk of HIV as they access care. So it can be used to plan, implement, and evaluate prevention interventions. So here are our preliminary findings, starting off with the demographics. In our study sample of adolescent girls and young women, 16% were adolescent girls, so that's 16 to 18 years of age, and 84% were young women, that's 19 to 24 years of age. Only 6% in, of adolescent girls and 21% of young women were cohabitating with their partner. About 76% and 63% came in for their first prenatal care visit at the clinic at over 20 gestational weeks. This slide maps the HIV PrEP indicators of, um, of AGYW in the PrEP PP study. Um, and to highlight, 14% of young women reported high HIV risk perception. Most women, so over 90%, were sexually active at baseline and initiated PrEP. 
so about greater than 80 percent at three months only 52 percent and 45 percent continued on prep and at six months 42 percent and 35 percent of women continued um, continued on prep we found that adolescent girls presenting at their first antenatal care had higher gestational weeks compared to the proportion of young women which is concerning um, with respect to incident HIV risk. High proportion of women were diagnosed with STIs at their baseline visit, high proportion of women reported alcohol use in the past 12 months, and high PrEP discontinuation rates were observed at three and six months among AGYW. In conclusion, PrEP discontinuation rates are high among adolescent girls and young women in our sample, and more analysis is needed to examine whether those discontinuing PrEP have reduced HIV risk, but perhaps they're not sexually active. Um, and that's definitely something that we need to explore in our future analyses. Finally, I want to say my acknowledgements again. Thank you to Dr. Joseph Davey, my mentor, for her guidance. Thank you to the PrEP PT study team, our study participants, the City of Cape Town, Department of Public Health staff for making this research possible. And of course, thank you to the Western Region Public Health Training Center for their generous funding and for providing this training opportunity.